Kyle Mohan Racing, and welcome back. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. All right, here it is. Everybody's been asking. This is the Renesis Hybrid RX813B. Now, I built this last year, and it was a great project. Thank you, everybody who's been tuning in and watching. And my plan was to get this up and running in the off-season. It did not happen. I had issues with filming, um, and then the shop got busy, and family got busy. And so the motor has sat. But everybody's been asking for both updates and generally what's going on. Well, that's what's going on. I've been trying to catch up. In the meantime, I figured I actually should continue the series. Um, I apologize about the exhaust video. I had an exhaust video almost ready to go. Mazda Tricks had done two variations of headers. I was able to find some photos. Um, and they had one header that actually did uh, make its way around the OEM mount that was based off of a combination of a racing beat and OBX off the shelf headers with some modifications to the uh, peripheral tubes on the 13B uh, GSLSE housings. So um, I apologize that that exhaust video did not happen. And if anybody is confused as to what I'm talking about, then please check out the links below because then you can see the build and dyno sheets and some of the discussion as to why we built this combination, which is a combination of RX-8 six-port Renesis side plates and RX-8 rotors that have been modified with GSLSE rotor housings to gain peripheral exhaust, giving us technically six exhaust ports because the center is divided and six intake ports, potentially one of the highest flowing 13B blocks you can build. And we built a couple of these at Mazda Tricks and it won a championship. And everybody always asks about the horsepower numbers. And again, link below. Um, we didn't do NA numbers ourselves, and that's what this motor is gonna do hopefully in the near future. But Mazda Tricks did uh, produce turbo numbers, and those are available, and that motor did run really well and is actually still together in the hands of a customer, and we just continue to hope that he will actually get it in the car and back up and running uh, in some type of form. So that's kind of some updates on exhaust. Um, the custom header for the turbo manifold was very exotic. I'll work on doing a new video about that Ma uh, manifold that Mazda Tricks made. Uh, thick wall, stainless, really cool to a T4 turbo. And then I'll also try to get a hold of that other uh, OBX racing beat uh, combination with the runner tubes. Um, if you can just imagine the simplest design possible, put a Renesis aftermarket header up there and then make two jumper tubes and uh, add some 13B flange inserts and uh, flatten it all out and get it going. Now, obviously, that's not going to be the best flow. You want, like, equal length and, and really beautiful, like, Ferrari-like uh, headers coming off of there. I know that's what I want, but in a pinch, a very uh, rudimentary log-style manifold or uh, modification, even better than a log, uh, to an aftermarket manifold uh, might get these projects up and running. And I'll make sure to show some of those soon. But that's that's covering a little bit of the exhaust. People are always asking. All right, now another thing everybody always asks about is why not just modify a Renesis RX-8 rotor housing, um, which doesn't come factory with that peripheral hole? Why not just drill that hole out like we do peripheral ports on the intake? And I mean, for all intent and purpose, that is a feasible option. It's just that GSLSE rotor housings are one of the cheapest rotor housing available new. Um, you can find them used. Um, they're on the shelf at Mazda Tricks. And if you're putting a lot of time into a custom hot rod motor, um, it might be worth just starting off with new rotor housings. And in an effort to kind of see the feasibility of uh, boring, inserting, sleeving, um, doing everything that we would need to do to the rotor housing to create an exhaust port. And everybody goes, oh, look, 
I mean, it's already there. You just got to drill it through. No, it's a little more complicated. You've got a water gallery to go through, aluminum and chrome with their serrated alligator teeth that helps hold everything in place when the factory makes these components, uh, which are combinations of different materials. Um, and then if you think about what the factory has also is an ink and L sleeve. Um, so there's actually a lot more than just boring a hole and sleeving it. Uh, having the chrome not chip, having the water gallery seal, and having a way to combat uh, exhaust gas temperatures, all are concerns. And I think the boring process itself would end up being more expensive uh, and you'd be most likely using a used rotor housing to start with um, than just simply buying a GSLSE rotor housing, which are still available. So I think uh, that's one of the reasons why I myself don't usually comment on the, you know, why don't you just use an RX-8 rotor housing and bore it. Um, it's because through all of these builds, through the years, we kind of realized that the machine work and the probability of failure in that exhaust area is really high. And the factory actually makes the component relatively inexpensively for what we're looking for. So there's covering a couple um, topics. Uh, you know, we talked about the why we don't use RX-8 rotor housings in the hybrids, why we use GSLSE. We covered a little bit about the failed exhaust video and the fact that there are some possibilities out there. And that will be another upcoming video. And then uh, a little bit of a reminder that we do have turbo numbers out there and there's been a whole successful history of a race car behind that turbo motor. And uh, what we're working on now is a naturally aspirated combination, um, which I know has been done um, in Australia uh, successfully, but I don't know the exact numbers. Um, so it'll be nice to see what we produce here numbers wise in the U.S., and then we'll probably be boosting this motor because I like turbocharged things. Look what's behind there. Yep, look at that, boosted. So, but a starting off street port combination just to kind of see where we get. And uh, I guess, you know, everybody always asks horsepower numbers. Well, I'd expect more than 250 because I think, you know, your old four port 13Bs pretty easily with a bolt on carbureted intake could get you into, you know, close to 250 or around there, maybe a little more, maybe a little less. So for me, the hope would be to see this climb into the 260s, 70s, 80s, um, and, and beyond. I don't see why we might not be able to push bridge port numbers um, or even close to peripheral port numbers, but at a lower RPM band with this combination. I haven't made it happen yet, but that's my goal. So there's a, a couple topics covered. Uh, comment below. I'll try to make this more of a thing where we can talk about some of the history of these motors and how we got to this point while I'm figuring out what chassis I want to put this in and coming up with some funds to make it all happen. So thank you everybody so much for following the channel, enjoying the videos, enjoying the rotary life. Um, check out the KMR eBay page. I've been posting up some old cool race car parts and I'm trying to add some more merch and cool stuff to the website. So that's a wrap. We're going to wrap it. Wrap on out. Thanks for watching. KMR. Mazda Tricks. Rotaries.